Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to virtual worship for First Christian Church. Today we are doing things a little differently as we look to recognize our most recent graduates, both from high school and from college, and they will be sharing their thoughts with us about their experiences in this time of transition and how their faith has played a role in both where they've been and where they hope to be going. As we begin our time of worship, I want to invite you to grab whatever elements you might like to have for this time. Go ahead and feel free to pause the video if you need to grab anything for communion or if you'd like to light a candle to kind of help us to center ourselves in this time of worship together. You may have noticed uh, I'm a little underdressed comparatively. I thought it appropriate to kick it old school um, in honor of our graduates. And although I would not have had the nose ring and I do not have my retainer, uh, this is as close as I could get to replicating my high school self, something that perhaps not many of us would like to do. But today we put ourselves in their shoes as they share their wisdom. And we join collectively as the body of Christ when we join our hearts and our minds together in this call to worship. Will you join me? We pray for the courage to take a stand with you for justice and peace in this world, in this time. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We pray for the wisdom to make healthy choices in the face of endless and confusing options. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We pray for the grace to redefine our relationships with our parents and our friends as our lives change. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We pray for the courage to swim against the current of society as we seek to follow where you lead us. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We pray for the courage to take a stand with you for justice and peace in this world, in this time. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We also join in sharing all of our joys and concerns and prayer updates. There have already been some that have gone out ahead of this service, and we continue to share those weekly in our email blasts, as well um, as folks may choose to leave uh, comments in the sections of this worship service, but in order to respect privacy, we are choosing to share this specifically through those who have requested to receive the information, whether that be through our prayer chain or through the email list. If you would like to be on one of those lists and are not currently, you can always reach out to myself specifically or to our church administrator, Sarah. We always want to be taking advantage of the opportunity to share in our joys and our concerns and offering up those updates because we are connected by the heartstrings in so many ways. I know I have been grateful for the prayers I have received from this community of faith and to know that it is with genuine compassion that folks come forward with a deep desire to know how we are doing and how we can help one another. So with that having been said, we are going to be working on a list of a couple of things, some projects around the church and in our community that we can make available for th folks that would like to be the church. Um, we acknowledged that during this time, we have never been closed. We have simply moved church into every home, in every driveway, in every television and cell phone to widen the access to the limitless grace of God. So um, some folks have already asked about projects that they can partake in, and we want to continue to circulate that information. So know that that will be coming out again in those emails, as well as on our Facebook page and on our website, some opportunities to serve our downtown community, as well as to celebrate our church family and to do the upkeep on our building and grounds. So lots of fun things coming up and we're excited that there's an opportunity to do that. 
It is one of the many ways that we can also share our offerings with God by being the church and contributing to church life. So if you cannot do one of those physically present things, or if you choose not to, to protect yourself, if you are perhaps at a higher risk, we are always accepting financial offerings and tithes as well. And we continue to be so, so grateful to those who have maintained their pledges to the church, even when we cannot be physically together, and we do hope to be so soon. Our worship team and our leadership team of Vision and Vitality are in conversations about the phases of how we can progress back to physical worship together. And we are excited to share with you as we have clearer guidance on where that path will take us. So I ask if you will be in prayer with me about that and specifically a prayer for our graduates now. God of grace and mercy, God of mystery and creativity, God who brings life from chaos, we ask that you will continue to be with us as we explore this life together, wherever it may take us. We ask that you will find ways to weave us closer together that will be safe and meaningful and life-giving. We ask that you will find ways to connect us when we are moving further apart when our life's path and journey is directing us elsewhere from the familiar and our family. We know that it is our faith which will guide us and carry us forward into uncertain times. If we are honest, all times are uncertain. So give us the humility to understand that life is beyond our control and that your will is beyond our reckoning. Help us to simply be open to the peace which surpasses understanding and a willingness to engage in the work of your spirit. We ask for all this in the name of your son, who came, who lived, who surprised us all. Amen. And now we will be transitioning to hear from our graduates after each one of them we will share in a song is as part of our reflection on what they have had to share with us. So first up is Zach Stratton. Hello everyone, this is Zach Stratton and this is my senior year reflection. It's crazy to think that just over four years ago I was baptized and officially welcomed into the church community and I know that I have changed a lot over the last four years both spiritually and as a person. And I am extremely grateful for each and every one of you because you have all helped shape me into who I am now and have helped guide me along this journey to get to this point. Now, first and foremost, I just want to say that I hope all of you are safe and healthy during these very strange times. I know that all of our worlds have frankly been turned upside down and that adapting to this new normal is extremely challenging to say the least. So I hope all of you are well. Now, over the last four years, I've had so many amazing opportunities within this wonderful community, and I am extremely thankful for all of them. First, the opportunity to serve as deacon over the last few years. It has offered me a chance to serve during the worship, and it's opened up a different type of interaction with individuals, especially during collection or serving communion, the opportunity to bond with people on a spiritual level. It's been extremely amazing, and it's something that I never really knew a lot about, but experiencing it has opened my eyes and has shown me that how wonderful that is. And without this wonderful community, I would never have had that. And then other opportunities, especially with volunteering, whether it be the Super Bowl sandwiches or the making of bags for the needy or cleaning up the church, moving the rooms over the summer and the cruise-ins which my family and I were able to participate in so many of those. All of those were amazing opportunities to serve both the church community and the community in general. Volunteering has always been something in which I take great pride in, and I frankly just enjoy it very much, being able to help others in any way I can. So all of those opportunities were amazing. And not only that, but they all also offered me a chance to build stronger relationships with people within the church community. And they have all just had such an amazing impact on who I am now. And so I am extremely thankful for this wonderful community because without all of you, I would never have had those chances. And 
again, that's just something which I've enjoyed very much, and I wouldn't have been able to do that without you. And one of the most amazing experiences I've had over the last three years was to go to Camp Christian, that week away from society where you were just put in a community solely focused on connecting even more with God. It is a unique experience and it's absolutely fantastic. And it has had such a wonderful impact on my life. And I've been able to meet so many amazing people and connect with so many amazing people. And again, without this wonderful community, I never would have had that chance. So that is something for which I'm extremely grateful. And last but not least, I would certainly be remiss if I didn't just offer a thank you to each and every one of you, because you have always been there for me for the last four years. Whenever I needed anything, this community has welcomed me with open arms through every step of the journey. And again, I know I've said this a lot, but it's true. Just had such an amazing impact on my life. And because of all of you, I feel extremely welcomed and loved and I absolutely cannot wait until we're able to gather in person again and worship together because I know we all miss that so much right now but it'll be back before we know it and I think it would only be right to include a bit of scripture so again I want to say quickly thank you to Debbie for helping me pick this one the scripture that we decided on choosing comes from Psalm 119 verses 105 to 112 your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. I think this bit extremely well sums up everything I've experienced over the last four years because this community has shown me that even though there are going to be obstacles and there are barriers, we're seeing that right now with everything happening. The word of God and Jesus and following those teachings if we do that, we can get through anything, and that is just the ultimate goal. And because of this community, again, I that has been reinforced, and I know that no matter what, I we can make it through anything, including this. So just as a final message, thank you all so much for everything. It has truly been my honor to be a part of this amazing community. And again, I cannot wait until we can be together again and worship together. Please continue to stay safe and healthy. And as I've said, I cannot wait to see you all again. Take care. Thank you so much, Zach, for those words of gratitude and humility. Let us all be so brave as to recognize that we need our network of support as we journey together. Let us be grateful for the guidance we receive from God and from one another as we sing together thy word.
next graduate is Megan Thomas, graduating from Kent State. I'll let her share a little bit about her degree and what these final stages of the process have been like for her. Hi everyone, it's Katie. Um, I just graduated um, on May 9th from Kent State with a degree in teaching early childhood, um, pre-K to third grade. Um, I was student teaching this semester when all of this happened and everything really changed. Um, I was halfway through my student teaching. We were just about at the spring break point when um, they closed the schools and then three weeks later when they continued to keep schools closed. So I had to switch my online teaching from being, or I had to switch my teaching from being in person to completely online and not being able to see my students. I, and I've been with these same students since September. So I was supposed to finish out the entire year with them and I didn't get the chance to do that in person. So I had to do that online and it was not how I expected it to be. But through it all, I just realized that I am so thankful for like the lessons I've learned like up until this point at church, through church, through the people I've met at church, um, to just go with the flow, um, like trust in God that everything will be okay, because that's pretty much all we can do is just trust and um, hope for the best. Um, and what really solidifies that for me um, is a verse from Psalm, Psalm 71 verse, 14 um and it says but i will keep on hoping for your help and i will praise you more and more and that just is so true for the times right now um like just continually hoping for help and praying that everything will be okay and go back to normal and health will be abundant um but that is just something that really sticks with me and really made me realize um, just how much trust you have to put into God in situations that you literally have no control over. Um, like graduating virtually was completely out of my control, anybody's control. Um, the health of everything that's just out of our control and we just need to, um, trust in God, continue to hope and pray and praise him for everything. Um, but yeah, so through it all, I've learned to always keep on hoping and keep on praising. Thanks. Megan reminds us that above all else, we can rely on the promises of God. And if we can release all of the other needs and competing desires in our hearts and simply trust and obey the will of God, that all will be well. So let us join our hearts together and our voices as well as we sing Trust and Obey. Yeah.
final sharing for today comes from our graduate, Leah Stanfield. We are so proud of all that she has shared with us in this community of faith and all that she will go on to share as a person of faith in the various communities that she will touch. Hello everyone. If you haven't figured it out by now, it is graduation Sunday and during this global pandemic i'm having a little bit of troubles trying to comprehend the fact that i'm graduating so i figured the more that i wear this lovely get up here the better i will be able to understand that i am graduating high school very soon so without further ado i will be reading a scripture from romans chapter 5 verses 3 through 5 and I will be reading it from this handy dandy Bible right here that I got from this lovely church family. And here we go. So it says, And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Life is difficult, and I'm sure many of you out there who are a lot older than me probably already know that. Um, but especially this year, my senior year, it was a very difficult year for me. And this is not just because of the global pandemic that was happening. <laughs> so in order for you guys to really understand my story, I have to start at the beginning of high school. So my freshman year, and basically every other year in high school, I booked myself in every single club and activity, but I excelled in them. I got every audition that I ever auditioned for. I was valedictorian, I was doing great in my classes, and I competed well in all of my clubs. So everyone told me from a young age that my senior year would be my year. It would be my year to be recognized. It would be my year to just take in all of the hard work that I've done. And that's where I went wrong because I made expectations for myself. I was set. I did everything right. I did everything to ensure my future success. So I made all these expectations for myself for senior year that when they were taken away from me, it hurt even more. So the things that were taken away from me is there's a lot of them but just to name a few i really wanted to be class president and i didn't get to do that i really wanted an end to my cross country season but as some of you may know i fractured my foot and i didn't get to complete my cross country season i wanted to be valedictorian but i didn't get to be valedictorian this year and i wanted to be in my senior my last senior musical production at Woodridge, but I didn't make it. I didn't make the musical this year. And through all of that, after all of that, I eventually ap I applied to 26 colleges. And although I made it into 26 colleges academically, I got rejected from every single one for musical theater. And that one really hurt because because I'm going into theater and I'm going into musical theater. I'm getting rejected because of my talent and, and for what I want to do was really hard. So now that you've heard my story and you know what kind of year I had, um, you guys should know that I've always thought of myself as being more, more of a mature person than other people in my grade. Um, and as an intellectual, if you will, because I always thought about my future and what I've wanted for myself. So I've come up with two things that I've learned throughout this year that hopefully you guys can learn because of me. 
So the first one is perseverance. And the ones who are most successful in life are normally the ones who are considered to be able to persevere through adversity. And this also goes with resilience and being resilient. Um, and this is said a lot, but you are not alone. And that, I forgot about that. I forgot that God is with me. And I forgot that he puts these things in our life to challenge us and to make us stronger. So in Psalm chapter 23, verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And this verse reminded me that God will never give you more than you can handle. And knowing that, and knowing that he is there when you feel like you have nothing, is very powerful. So the second thing I've learned in my very short 17 years of life is that life is not about a title and it's not about the position you've gotten at your work and it's not about the money you make, it's not about where you live, and it's certainly not about whether or not you got valedictorian your senior year of high school even though that one's very difficult for me to understand. But it's about people you affect, and it's about the people and lives that you've changed. It's about the laughs and the smiles and the kindness that you share with other people. And that's the whole reason why we are here. It's not, life isn't about getting a job and making money. It's about being with other people. And so whether you are old or young in this congregation, you are able to learn new things. And I hope you did learn a couple of things from my speech and my experience of my senior year. And in words of sending, I want to tell you that God is with you, whether you think so or not, and whether you feel him or not. He is there, and he puts things there to help you along your way. Thank you. Leah shares a brave message of perseverance, and we have a special song that we've gotten permission from Baldwin Wallace, a song of several other musical theater graduates and this is the song of their hearts in this time. Stories of passion, stories of friendship, and ways we can deal with our fears. So many songs, stories of stillness, of people not moving, and how rich or poor, it's a very small sphere. Hear my song, it'll help us get through till tomorrow. Hear my song, it'll show you the way. Hear my song It was made for the time When you don't know where to go Listen to the song that I sing And trust me, we'll be fine Stars are thriving Songs of surviving
we have planned. It is a comfort to be reminded that God has a plan for us, that perhaps sometimes the song of our own hearts is a dissonant melody to the song of God's heart. And so we open ourselves to the song of God in our midst, the voice of God in our midst, the lessons that Christ came to share with us and with all who would follow in his footsteps. He tried to explain these lessons and many times they were confusing, even when he gathered in those final days with his disciples and they sat at table and he blessed bread and after he had broken it, he offered it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, after they had had dinner, he took the cup and he offered it to them, explaining, this is the cup of the new covenant. Drink all of it, for as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's life and death until he comes again. For surely I will not eat of this bread or drink of this cup until I share it again with you in my Father's kingdom. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome at this table and at all tables where Christ presides. So open your heart and allow Christ to be the one who presides in your home, in your heart, at your table, so that wherever you may go in this journey that we are called to share, you will be connected by the Spirit of Christ the Holy Spirit who makes us one. May you be blessed as you receive these gifts and you offer yourself into God's keeping. Remember that graduation is not one moment in time, but it is an incremental change. And so we are always graduating from one moment to the next, always evolving in our faith and revealing more of God into the world. May this be the blessing in your life this week. Amen.